Hebrews chapter number 10, we'll begin reading verse number 1. The Bible says, For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered, because that the worshipers once purged should have no more conscience of sins. But in those sacrifices there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he, speaking of the Lord Jesus, cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. Now look at verse 10. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Let's pray. Father, we sure do bless you. We thank you for the good singing, the good choir singing, good congregational singing, good special singing. Thank you for a good Sunday school hour. Thank you for those of our folks went over to the jail and the jail services you blessed us with. Thank you, Lord, for a good week of revival, and thank you for being a good God. Thank you for your amazing grace. Thank you, Lord, for always watching over us. And God, thank you for being far better to us than we are to you. Lord, we certainly do thank you again for your good grace. Now, bless. I pray you'd help Brother Ed. We know he'd be here today if he was feeling better. I pray you'd touch him. I pray for Brother Clint the same. He'd be here if he felt better. Touch him. Be with Miss Mary. Help her and help her eye. And Lord, I pray that you'd touch her and her vision get better. Father, I pray for the next few minutes you'd put a hedge about us. And I pray that you would bless not only the hearing of the Word of God, help us not to be just hearers, but help us to become doers of the Word of God. Lord, there is a famine in this day for hearing the Word of God and putting it into practice. Now, Father, I pray that you'd use this unworthy vessel, and I pray the Word of God would accomplish that which you would uh, cause it to do. I certainly do pray if there be any amongst us today lost without God, today would be the day of their salvation. I pray for the saints of God that, Lord, you would strengthen them, you would help them, you'd meet every need of their heart and lives. Bless now. Use this unworthy vessel again. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The writer of the book of Hebrews is writing this letter to save Jews. Now many say that the Apostle Paul wrote the book of Hebrews. I don't know. I do know who did write it. The Holy Ghost wrote it. Uh, but uh, it's not important who authored it. What's important is what it says. And uh, this book was written to save Jews to transition them from the law to grace. All their lives they'd been taught the law and now all of a sudden, uh, they have to see that the law uh, uh, was the mother and grace is the offspring. Uh, and there's a mother-daughter relationship here uh, that the Lord Jesus Christ formed. Uh, and the law was the schoolmaster, but it came to fruition in Jesus Christ uh, who came full of grace and truth. Uh, and they had to see that Everything in the law pictured what Jesus would do in the finished works of Calvary. Uh, now notice in these verses, the writer conveys several thoughts. First of all, he makes it known that uh, uh, there's the foreshadowing of the law. Look again at verse number 1, For the law having a shadow of good things to come. The law was nothing more than a foreshadow, a picture, a type uh, of what would come, uh, the goodness, the greatness that would come in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, a lot of folks today are religious, and religion is okay in itself, but all religion will do is bring damnation. What will take you to heaven is a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. So we see the foreshadowing of the law. But then notice the faultiness in sacrifices. Look in verse number 1 again. 
It says, and not the very image of the things uh, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually uh, make the comers thereunto perfect. Uh, for then would they not have ceased to be offered uh, because that the worshipers once purged uh, should have no more conscience uh, of sins. But in those sacrifices there's a remembrance again made of sins every year. Uh, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Uh, there was faultiness in the sacrifices. Uh, if you remember when Adam and Eve uh, uh, sinned, uh, the Lord slayed some animals and covered their nakedness uh, uh, with the skins of the animals. Uh, uh, blood was shed. Uh, uh, if you remember uh, uh, when Moses uh, went to deliver Israel out of Egypt, uh, uh, the last plague that God sent, uh, God told Moses uh, uh, to put up a lamb uh, and every uh, household take a lamb and slay the lamb and put the blood of the lamb over the doorposts and the lentils of the house and when the death angel came into the city when he'd see the blood he'd pass over them and therefore the Passover feast was instituted in the nation of Israel and every year at Passover time the high priest would put up a lamb and he would slay that lamb and he'd take the blood of that lamb uh, and he'd sprinkle it on the mercy seat uh, within the holy place uh, and the Shekinah glory of God would come uh, and accept the sacrifice uh, and the sins of the people were pushed back for a year. And every year they had to do that. And what the writer is telling us, uh, if the blood of bulls and goats uh, uh, would have been perfect in the sacrifices, not only would Jesus not have to come, uh, but they don't have to offer them once. But you see, they couldn't purge their conscience because every year they had to come back and remember uh, all the, uh, 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 the, the course of why that lamb was being offered. It was for their sins. Uh, but my dear friends, aren't you glad when Jesus Christ came and he became as the Lamb of God? Uh, John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. Uh, Jesus died once uh, and for all. Uh, and when he died, hallelujah, uh, he paid for our sin debt. Uh, and when you and I accept him as our Lord and Savior, uh, he washes us from our sins, uh, never to be remembered anymore. Uh, uh, I don't have to come to church church to put up an offering for my sin. Uh, the sin offering has been offered. Uh, I come and worship him for what he done for me. Uh, the sacrifices were faulty. There's the foreshadowing of the law, but there's also the fulfilling of the scripture. Look at verse 7. This is Jesus speaking. He is speaking what a prophet wrote. Then said I, Lo, I come, and the volume of the book it is written of me to do thy will, O God. Can I say from Genesis to Revelation, the entire word of God was given for our ensamples and our example, but everything in the word of God is written in Jesus Christ. And can I say when he... Uh, 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 came and bled and died, was buried and rose again according to the scriptures, he fulfilled uh, the very will and law of God for your life and my life. Friend, I don't care. Open it up anywhere. If you get to read and get to look and you'll find Jesus there. He came in the volume of the book. What did Jesus do when he came for 33 years? He lived the pages of the word of God. He fulfilled it. Mm -hmm. He did what God said it would take for you and I to go to heaven. He became the supreme sacrifice. He fulfilled the scriptures. And then notice forgiveness is only found in the Savior. Look at verse number 5. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he says, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared for me. Look at verse 10. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifice which could never take away sins. Uh, but this man, after he had uh, offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. Uh, oh, salvation's only found in Jesus Christ. 
Salvation is not found in religion. Salvation is not found in baptism. Salvation is not found in church membership. Salvation is not found in good, doing good deeds. Salvation is not found in giving offerings. Listen, uh, uh, being baptized is important. Being a member of a church is important. Uh, living a good life and doing good deeds is important. Uh, uh, fulfilling your obligation uh, uh, to the Lord is important. But none of that matters if you don't know Jesus. He's the only one who can save you. And with all that in mind... We know that Jesus came, that he lived a sinless life. We know the last three and a half years of his life, he, he fulfilled his ministry. He went about doing good. We know that he, he did very many miracles. Uh, he opened blinded eyes. He raised the dead. He healed the lepers. He healed uh, those with withered hands, those that were lame. Uh, he took very little and fed many. Uh, 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 he did deed after deed after deed, uh, proving he was the one that the prophets wrote of. Yet they crucified him. One dark day, they led him up Calvary's mountain after they'd beat him beyond recognition and they nailed him to a rugged cross and he shed his blood to be our sacrifice. But did you ever think about what he did after he died? I'm going to preach for a few minutes this morning on what Jesus did after his death. What Jesus did after his death. You say, what happened after he died? Well, first thing he did is he preached. You say, how did he preach when he was dead? Because he wasn't dead. His body died. But he's the resurrection and the life. Life came from him. You say, but what did he do after he died? The first thing he did is he preached. Uh, let me give you the verses. Uh, in 1 Peter 3, verse number 18, the Bible says, For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust. That's us. Uh, that he might bring us to God, uh, being put to death in the flesh, uh, but quickened or, or made alive by the Spirit. Uh, 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 then it says in verse 19, By which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. Where did he, who did he preach to and where did he preach? I'm glad you asked. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 8 says this, uh, Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Uh, now he that ascended uh, was, uh, what is, is it, uh, but that he also descended uh, first into the lower parts of the earth. Now, can I say in Luke chapter 16, we find the story where the rich man died and went to hell. And there was a beggar who sat at his gate who died, and the Bible says was carried by the angels uh, into Abraham's bosom. Can I say that mm, before Jesus uh, uh, resurrected... Uh, and before he made it possible for you and I to be saved, uh, uh, Old Testament saints didn't die like we die. See, the Bible makes it clear, uh, if you're saved by the good grace of God, uh, uh, for you to die, uh, uh, you'll be absent from the body, but in the presence of the Lord. A Christian just dies and goes to sleep and wakes up in glory. But uh, before Jesus resurrected, that was not the case. See, every Old Testament saint uh, couldn't go straight to heaven, Brother Doug, like us, uh, because their sins had to be cleansed by the same thing that our sins had to be cleansed uh, by, by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we already tried to convey the blood of bulls and goats wouldn't wash away your sin. Uh, it was a picture of the perfect sacrifice uh, that Jesus would do. Uh, so what happened to them Old Testament saints? Uh, well, in the lower parts of the earth, uh, uh, the is the place that we know of called hell. Uh, 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 that is the place uh, uh, where the souls of dead men go uh, and they're reserved there until the day of judgment uh, where they'll be called out of hell at the great white throne judgment uh, and they'll be sentenced for their sins uh, because they wouldn't let Jesus pay for their sins uh, and they'll be cast off into the lake of fire forever and ever and ever where they'll pay for their sins. But before Jesus resurrected, uh, there was a great gulf between the, between the place we call hell and a place that is called uh, Abraham's bosom, or also it's called paradise. 
And every Old Testament saint uh, uh, had to go to paradise uh, and there they abode uh, until Jesus uh, uh, was able to pay for their sins. Uh, he went and he preached unto them. Uh, uh, let me just kind of clarify it like this a little bit. Uh, uh, you see, uh, uh, they would die and go to paradise. Now, Miss Melissa, uh, paradise was a nice place. It was a comfortable place. Uh, there was no harm. There was no uh, uh, anything that would hurt uh, uh, but they were there until Jesus came to deliver them. The first person that ever went to paradise was Abel. You know, Cain slew Abel, and Abel's there in paradise. Uh, and he's there for a while, uh, and he don't know why he's there, but he's there. It's a perfect place, Brother Donald, uh, but there, it's a lonely place. Uh, then all of a sudden, uh, uh, here comes his dad, Adam, uh, and Abel says, Hey, hey, Dad, what's going on? Uh, 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 why are we here? Uh, and Adam begins to explain to him. Uh, he says, Son, do you remember uh, how that uh, uh, we told you that uh, um, your mother and I used to walk with God in the cool of the day. God put us in a place called Eden. Uh, it was a perfect place. Uh, we were without sin. We could see the spiritual world and the natural world. Uh, but one day uh, uh, your uh, uh, mama was beguiled by the devil uh, and she partook of the fruit. God said not to eat of the fruit of that tree. Uh, and she gave to me and I did eat. Uh, and uh, son, we were tainted by sin. Uh, and as a result we were cast out of the garden uh, and we had to work uh, uh, for our food uh, and you remember we uh, uh, taught you and, and your brother uh, uh, that God uh, when he came to us uh, he slew those animals and he covered our nakedness uh, and son blood had to be shed uh, and you remember son when you brought that blood offering to the Lord uh, and he was pleased and your brother was displeased uh, when he brought his works uh, and the fruit of his labor uh, and hey your brother was so jealous he slew you yes yes uh, he said son uh, uh, all of that is a picture. Uh, one day, uh, uh, the Lord's going to send His Lamb uh, who's going to shed His blood, uh, who'll pay for our sins. Uh, and Son, uh, He's going to then take us uh, where we'll be restored to the Father uh, and we'll walk with God like it was always intended to be. Uh, well, Abel's excited. Uh, Adam's excited. Uh, and a little time goes on. Uh, and all of a sudden, uh, here comes a fellow by the name of Noah. And they say, Noah, what's going on on the earth? Uh, uh, could you preach to us for a little while tonight? Uh, and Noah said, be glad to. Uh, he said, uh, uh, the earth was full of wickedness. Uh, and men did what was evil in his own eyes uh, continually. Uh, and God repented that he made man. Uh, and God came to me one day. Uh, and he said, Noah, uh, I want you to build an ark. Uh, he said, yes, Lord. Uh, what's an ark? Uh, and God told me what an ark was. Uh, and he told me how big to make it uh, and how to pitch it and how to do this and how to do that and how many levels. Uh, and I said, all right, Lord. Uh, after 120 years, uh, I built the ark. Uh, and for 120 years, I preached it was going to rain. Uh, I preached the judgment of God was coming. Uh, and folks laughed at me. Uh, and they mocked me. Uh, and one day, hallelujah, uh, uh, God told me to get in the ark uh, and I got in the ark and he sent the animals uh, and God shut the door uh, on me and my family uh, and God allowed it to rain for 40 days and 40 nights uh, and wiped off uh, everyone from the face of the earth. Uh, Adam chimed in and said, I noticed across that gulf uh, hell was enlarging herself uh, and a lot of folks ended up over there. Uh, hey, and Noah said, uh, hey, Hey, that ark is a picture. Uh, uh, hey, God's going to send his ark uh, one day. Uh, and he's going to place us in the ark uh, and carry us off to glory and safety. Uh, and they was excited in paradise. A uh, little bit of time. Uh, all of a sudden, here comes Abraham. Uh, and Abraham shows up. Uh, and they said, Abraham, will you preach to us? Uh, Abraham said, I'd be glad to. Uh, said, I live to be a, an old man. Uh, lived a fruitful life. Uh, God had been good to me. Uh, I tried my best to follow him by faith. Uh, didn't always do right, but most of the time, uh, God was with me. Uh, one day, my old age, God comes by. Uh, says, Abraham, all the nations are going to be blessed by your seed. Uh, and he promised I was going to have a son. Uh, uh, my wife thought I was crazy. Uh, hey, but in my hundred years of age, uh, God gave me a son. Uh, and we named him Isaac. Uh, 
Hey, I love that boy. Yeah. That boy was the apple of my eye. Uh, all of a sudden, God came to me one day, uh, said, "Me, take your boy up to Mount Moriah uh, and offer him up to me." Uh, he said, "Listen, uh, God made me a promise uh, that all the nations be blessed by my seed." Uh, I knew in my heart uh, that if hey, uh, if I slew him, God could raise him up again, uh, and I just uh, trusted God. Uh, took him up that hill. Uh, hey. Uh, while we was on our way, the boy said, Father, uh, we got the wood. Uh, we got the fire. Uh, where's the lamb? Uh, and he said, God himself uh, shall provide a lamb. Uh, he said, I don't even know where that came from. It just welled up in my heart. Uh, I laid Isaac on the altar, raised the knife, and the voice of God came uh, and caused me to turn around. There's a ram caught in a thicket. Uh, and I said, Hallelujah to God. Uh, hey, there's coming a day. Uh, God himself shall provide a lamb uh, and take us from paradise uh, on to glory. Uh, well, they're shouting in paradise. Uh, they're having a time. Uh, thinking about God's going to do work uh, and take them from this perfect place uh, to the place of all places, uh, to glory. Uh, what long? Uh, here comes Joshua. Uh, and Joshua shows up. Uh, and they said, Joshua, you preach to us. Uh, he had a little zeal to him. Uh, had a little hat to his preaching. I like Joshua. Uh, hey, uh, they said, Joshua, you preach. Uh, and Joshua preached and said, uh, uh, the man of God, Moses, uh, had led us out of Egypt. Uh, and we're down there. Uh, and all of a sudden, the people began to murmur and complain. Uh, they're Jews, but they ought to be called Baptists. Uh, uh, they're complaining about everything. Uh, all of a sudden, uh, God sent serpents out of the wilderness uh, and started biting people. Uh, and people started to get withered up and going to die. Uh, and God told Moses uh, to make a brazen pole, uh, put a brass serpent on it. Uh, all that would look to it uh, could live. Uh, and hey, there's coming a day. Uh, God's going to take his son uh, and raise him up. Uh, and all that will look to him at the cross uh, can live. And they's got to shouting about that for a little while. Uh, all of a sudden, hallelujah, David shows up. Uh, and he showed up with a song. Uh, and they began to ask him, uh, would you preach? He said, I'd rather sing, but let me give you a little something. Uh, he said, listen, uh, hey, uh, I was uh, 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 writing songs one day to praise God uh, over on the backside of the sheep field. Uh, and all of a sudden, God gave me Psalm 22. Uh, and in that psalm, God had me write, uh, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Uh, God had me write, I'm a word and no man. Uh, God had me write, uh, 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 All the bulls of Bashan have encompassed me. Uh, and as I'm appending that down, uh, uh, God spoke to me uh, uh, personally and said, That's about my son, uh, whom I'm going to forsake, uh, that he could pay your sin debt. Uh, and hey, there's coming a day. Uh, God's going to pay our sin debt and get us out of paradise. Uh, and they began to shout in paradise uh, and enjoyed the good preaching and singing by David. Uh, all of a sudden, Elisha shows up. Uh, and they said, Preach to us, man of God. Uh, and Elisha began to throw it down. Uh, he began to preach about Elijah, the man of God. Uh, and he got to preaching about Mount Carmel uh, and who God really is. Uh, he's a God uh, who answers by fire. Uh, and he gets to preach about the man of God. Uh, and he said, hey, there came a day uh, when uh, he wanted to leave me at Jordan and I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't leave. Uh, he wanted to leave me at Bethel and I wouldn't stay. Uh, and he gave, finally said, what do you want? Uh, and I said, uh, I want double what you got. Uh, and on that glorious day, uh, as we're standing there talking, uh, hey, there was a chariot of fire blew through there. Uh, and the man of God got on that chariot, uh, and off he went to glory. Uh, and there's coming a day uh, when God's going to blow through here, uh, 
and take us on to glory. Uh, and they got to shout about Elisha's preaching. Uh, what long Isaiah showed up. Uh, and Isaiah preached uh, uh, about Psalm, uh, Isaiah 53 uh, and how he was beaten, how the Lord laid on him the iniquity of Saul. Uh, he preached on I Isaiah 9 uh, where he'd be born of a virgin. Uh, what long Zechariah showed up. Uh, and Zechariah preached uh, 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 that he'd be sold for 30 pieces of silver. Uh, Micah showed up uh, and he got to preach and he preached that he'd be born uh, in Bethlehem, Ephrata. Uh, and all of a sudden, uh, a, a fellow shows up. Uh, they said, sir, would you preach? Uh, he said, I'd be glad to preach. Uh, my name is Simeon. Uh, he said, and the Holy Ghost told me uh, I was going to live till I laid eyes on the Lord's deliverer. Uh, and all of a sudden, one day, I'm sitting out by the house of God. Uh, and here comes a young couple. Didn't look like they had too much uh, 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 to their name. Uh, but they came walk, uh, walking up. Uh, and the Holy Ghost said, go look at that couple. Uh, and I looked at their child. He was eight days old. Uh, and they brought him to the temple to be circumcised. Uh, and I'd never seen a child like this child. Uh, he had a sense of holiness about him. Uh, and hey, I asked if I could... Uh, hold him and they gave him to me uh, and as I held him I held him up uh, and I said I could die in peace uh, for mine eyes have seen the salvation of the Lord uh, well paradise gets excited uh, they get happy uh, uh, why they know uh, uh, the Lord's delivers now on the earth uh, I mean uh, uh, listen uh, 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 Abel been there for almost 4,000 years uh, uh, and listen as excited uh, what long uh, another fellow shows up they said sir would you preach he says that's all I got in me is preaching uh, he looked like a wild man uh, had some locusts and honey hanging out his mouth uh, and his name's John uh, and he said hey uh, I was the forerunner uh, that was prophesied of uh, and I got to preaching about uh, uh, repent for the kingdom of heavens at hand uh, and be baptized uh, and I'm baptizing Jews all over the place uh, all of a sudden I look up up. I'm in standing in the midst of Jordan uh, and here he come uh, and I, hey something within me welled up uh, and said uh, hey behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world uh, hey uh, I told him I needed to be baptized to him uh, but he said no you gotta permit it I gotta fulfill the law uh, and he was baptized uh, into his ministry uh, and he's hey started his ministry uh, well they're excited in paradise he's not only on the earth he's now uh, performing his ministry uh, they're excited uh, they're happy uh, all kinds of things are happening uh, and all of a sudden another fellow shows up uh, they said sir would you preach uh, said I'd be glad to uh, said hey uh, uh, listen this man Jesus never a man spoke like him uh, hey everywhere he goes uh, people are flocking to him uh, and the religious crowd's getting mad. Uh, he's calling them a bunch of snakes and vipers. Uh, but hey, he's touching uh, uh, the lame and making them whole. Uh, hey, uh, he's uh, 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 doing things that nobody else could do. Uh, hey, and I got two sisters that just love him supremely. Uh, about that time, uh, there came a voice into paradise. Uh, said, Lazarus, uh, come forth. Uh, he said, boys, I'd like to finish the message. Uh, but that's a hymn uh, and I'm a going uh, and Lazarus left uh, and they're excited because uh, they've heard his voice in paradise yeah. all of a sudden a young man shows up it's a little bit out of place they said sir would you preach to us I mean camp meetings going on he says I don't know much about preaching I don't know much about anything but thieving and robbing. Yeah. Today I was paying for my crimes. I was hanging on a cross with another fella. Right. And all of a sudden there was a big stirring. And a crowd kept getting closer and closer. And all of a sudden I... I noticed they was reviling man and spitting on him and mocking him and making fun of him. And they 
laid that cross down and he wasn't like me and this other fellow. We fought him tooth and nail, but he just laid down on it. <laughs> and they nailed his heads uh, at his feet uh, and they propped him up between us. Uh, and they put a superscription above him calling him the king of the Jews. Uh, well, the crowd was having making fun of him and, and cussing him. And uh, he said, in my pain and in my agony, I joined in. Uh, and I was uh, cussing him and reviling him. Uh, but I got to listening to this man. Uh, this man started saying stuff like, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Uh, he looked down at his mom in the crowd and one of his followers and said, Son, behold thy mother. Uh, mother, behold thy son. Uh, and he began to speak. Uh, and hey, uh, something within me said, uh, uh, This man isn't like us. Uh, and hey, that other man kept reviling. And I said, Hey, don't revile in him. Uh, he's not worthy of it. Uh, and something within me uh, uh, broke. Uh, and I looked at him and said, Lord, uh, I remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Uh, and he said this to me. Uh, Today uh, thou shalt be with me in paradise. Uh, well, paradise explodes. Uh, they're uh, uh, throwing babies and taking laps. Because uh, they know today's the day. Uh, and in the midst of their shouting, in the midst of their excitement, uh, all of a sudden the doors of paradise open. Uh, and he, uh, uh, the one that's been preached to him for all these years, uh, walks in. Uh, the big preacher shows up, honey. Uh, and Jesus preached unto him uh, uh, the shed blood of Calvary. Uh, and all those spirits in prison, uh, he led captivity captive. Uh, and hey, they got their wish. Uh, they got to go to heaven. What did Jesus do after his death? He preached. Can I say this? He plummeted death, hell, and the grave. Uh, he conquered it. And Paul wrote 1 Corinthians 15, 55, O death, where's thy sting? O grave, where's thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. He conquered death, and death couldn't keep him. He conquered hell. Hell couldn't kill him. Matter of fact, the devil don't even have the keys to his own hell, house because Jesus said, I have the keys to death, hell, and the grave. Huh? He conquered the grave when he resurrected. We celebrate that every Easter Sunday. True Bible believers, we celebrate it every Sunday. That's why we worship on the Lord's Day because he got up out of the grave on Sunday. What can I say? He plummeted death, hell, and the grave. He, he defeated everything that you and I fear as human beings. Death is the king of terrors, but death has no sting for a Christian. Uh, the grave is not permanent. Matter of fact, we don't, even, we don't even change our wardrobe in the grave. We're already in glory for our bodies go to the grave. Are you listening? Uh, what else did he do after he died? He proved that he arose. And 1 Corinthians 15, verse 3, Paul said, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, uh, of whom the greater part remaineth unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. Uh, after that he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. What do you say? He proved he got out of the grave. Hmm? Even the Jews knew he did, huh? What did he do after he died? He presented his blood. In John twenty seventeen. Mary Magdalene's there looking for the body of Jesus. Well, he's got it. He's walking around. Are you listening? Hmm? Now, it's a glorified body. It's not like the one that went in the grave. But he, he sees her. She's heartbroken. Jesus said unto her after he revealed who he was. She thought he was a gardener. Hmm? Uh, there's been a lot of us think about something going on. We didn't realize it was the Lord in our midst just doing something, sending somebody our way, trying to help us, huh? What can I say? When she found out it was Jesus, he said, touch, touch me not, for I'm not yet ascended unto my Father. Why wouldn't he let her touch him? Because the sacrifice that was made, you see, in, in that Old Testament covenant, when the high priest would slay the lamb, he'd take the blood, put it in a basin. Then he had to part that lamb into certain parts and put them on the altar, and he had to keep it on the altar till it was consumed. 
if any part of that sacrifice came off the altar or if a fowl from heaven came and took part of that sacrifice it was all defiled he'd have to start all over again he didn't want the sacrifice to be defiled now listen in Hebrews chapter 9 look back a page Hebrews chapter 9 once you see this verse 11 but Christ being come a high priest of good things to come by a greater more perfect tabernacle not made with hands that is to say not of this building neither by the blood of goats and calves but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place having obtained eternal redemption for us what's the holy place you do know the temple and the tabernacle the tabernacle Moses constructed and the temple that Solomon constructed you know that Moses got the blueprint when he was on the mountain and God showed him the tabernacle and glory don't you well could I say if the high priest put the blood on the ark of the covenant as a shadow a picture of what really goes on Jesus took the blood that he shed and he took it to heaven along with those uh, uh, saints of uh, Old Testament saints in paradise he took them to glory and he took the blood and he presented it on the mercy seat before God and it's an everlasting covenant to you and I when we go to heaven one of the first things we get to see is the blood that was shed for our sins that's a perpetual covenant between God the Father and God the Son as long as that blood's there your sins are covered what a blessing to know that uh, he presented his blood and the Father was well pleased are you listening what did he do after, he, after his death? He predisposed his church. Matthew 28, verse 19. Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them, observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you all way, even unto the end of the world. What did he do? He commissioned his church. He predisposed his church. He said, all right, boys, go get them. That's your job. Preach the gospel to every creature those that accept it believe on me then teach them disciple them to observe everything that I've taught you and make more converts had the church not done what the church is supposed to do in, in Acts you and I wouldn't have a church today hmm? he predisposed his church and what did Jesus do after his death he left with a promise Acts chapter 1 verse 10 and while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up behold two men stood by them white apparel which also said ye men of Galilee why stand ye gazing up into heaven this same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come again in like manner as you've seen him go into heaven what a promise said he's going away but he's coming back yep. hmm? huh? that's the blessed hope we hang on to that he's coming back could come today wouldn't that be a blessing uh, just like them saints in paradise waiting to go home wouldn't that be a blessing if he just come and got us when we went home today sure would huh he left with a promise but he was also promoted openly now we know he was the son of God he's the son of God in the alpha he'll be son of God in omega he's son of God while he hung on the cross but God openly promoted him. Listen to what the Bible says in Philippians 2, verse number 9. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in the earth and things under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Hmm? One of these days, even Satan's going to bow and proclaim him Lord of Lords. The king of kings, huh? Hallelujah. They're going to bind him and throw him in the lake of fire. Hallelujah for that. I said all that, say this. Why did he do all that? He did all that, first of all, to save us. Had he not died, was buried, and rose again according to the scriptures, there'd been no hope for us. Even the Jews, God's chosen people, would have had no hope. But us Gentile dogs, the offscour of the word, the heathen, had no right to God. Hey, had he not grafted in the true vine a branch of the church, we'd had no hope. But he died and shed his blood to save us. It's God's will that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God loves you. He tasted death for you. He paid for your sins. If you die and go to hell, it won't be Jesus' fault. It won't be this church's fault. It won't be my fault. I've told you the truth. But he died so you could go to glory and be reconciled restored to the Father the way it was supposed to be all along he did all that to save us he did all that to secure us I don't know if you know this or not you couldn't keep yourself saved uh, 
Some of you are going to blow your testimony by the time you get to the restaurant and, and got to wait in line for 40 minutes, huh? That sorry, no good preacher, he kept us here all day, huh? Uh, that sorry, no good restaurant, they ought to hire more people, huh? Uh, we couldn't keep ourselves saved, but I'm glad Jesus can. He did all of that to sustain us. He not only watches over us, as Miss Brittany sang, he meets our every need. And he gives us a lot of our wants. He sustains us and keeps us going. He strengthens us when we're weak. Uh, he humbles us when we're lofty. Hmm? But he sustains us because he's a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. Hmm? He did all that, my dear friends, to satisfy us. I don't need to go look for a different church. I don't need to go look for a different master, a different Lord. I don't need to look for a different Bible. I don't, I'm satisfied. Matter of fact, the night I got saved, you all heard it a million times. I got saved third Saturday night of March 1974. Huh? You've heard it be said a million times. But when I got up from the altar, my granddaddy, my old white-haired granddaddy, Miss Lynn's daddy, looked at me. That's what he said. He didn't say, did you repeat a prayer? Did, he didn't say, did you run down this path? He didn't say, you know what he said to me? He said, son... Are you satisfied? Can I say I satisfied that night? And for the 48 years since, I'm still satisfied in what Jesus did in my life. Because he satisfies you. Huh? Once you drink from the well, the water he's got, you don't want any other water. Are you listening? Huh? He satisfies us. But can I say this? He did all that so he can shuttle us to heaven. Let me ask you this. Friend, are you saved? If you're not saved, this might be the last opportunity you ever get to trust in Christ. Bartimaeus was blind, sitting by the wayside begging. No doubt somebody had come by and told him about Jesus. Because when he heard Jesus was coming down the road, he began to scream, Jesus, our son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus called for him, even though the crowd tried to get him to shut up. And Jesus gave him his sight. Now I said that to say this, that was the last time Jesus passed through Jericho. Had he listened to the crowd and quit calling on Jesus, he'd have died a blind man. Isn't this amazing, Brother James? The first face he ever saw was Jesus. Everything was downhill from there. Huh? Can I say, this might be your Jericho, friend. Might be the last time Jesus passes by your way. Don't listen to the crowd. Don't even listen to your own arguments. If you're not saved, I get saved today. Well, let me ask you, saved person, all that Jesus did for us, what are we doing for him? This world ought to be able to see our life and see a different life than they see other places. They ought to take note that we've been with Jesus. We ought to sound like Jesus. Huh? We ought to point them to Jesus with our life and with our lips. Hmm? Well, what do we do for him? You realize a hundred years from now, the only thing that's going to matter is what you did for him. What are we doing for him? I know we've got to live a life, and I know you've got to work a job, and I know there's certain things you have to do. That's okay. But in the midst of all that, what are you doing for him? If all you're ever doing for him is come to church, you're, you're not a very good servant. See, because this isn't service. This is worship. Service happens outside these doors. All that he done for us, every hurdle that he jumped, every obstacle that he removed, every argument that he fulfilled, he did it all to redeem us and give us a better life. He said, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Some of you don't look like you're living a very abundant life. I think you've let life overcome the joy of the Lord in your life. And can I say, when you get full of him 
Yeah, you can still live life, but it just doesn't matter when he's all that matters. I wonder today, as good as he's been to us, how good are we to him? As much as he has blessed us, how much do we bless him? As kind as he is to us, how kind are we to him? As long-suffering as he is to us, are we willing to suffer for him? There's nobody like Jesus. He is Lord, and he loves you. And he became like us that we could become like him. I wonder, do you know him? And if you do, what are you doing for him? Let's all stand. Miss Renee, if you'll come to the piano, just pick out something to play. And while she's coming to the piano, let's pray. Father, we sure do love you. Thank you for first loving us. Thank you for the scriptures. Lord, we've been begotten by an incorruptible book. Thank you, Lord, for the hope of glory. Thank you, Lord, for a peace that passes understanding. Thank you for joy unspeakable and full of glory, all made possible by the finished works of Calvary. Lord, if you cared so much to go preach to those in paradise, I'm so thankful you come by our way and preach to us. Now, Father, help somebody today that might be strangers to the grace of God realize they're lost and help them to come and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, if there's somebody here saved but living far beneath the privileges of a child of God, I pray today you'd rekindle a fire in their heart, give them a zeal for God, and God do something special for them. Bless this invitation now. Speak to hearts. Well, thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.